Lesson 14.4, Rotations. So the hardest thing about rotations is uh, is writing it. So uh, we write it with a script R. And if you see me write it by hand, it'll look something like... No, well, that's not it. Something like that. And it's a uh, rotation about... point O of 90 degrees counterclockwise. Which bothers people. They always think it should be clockwise. But that's it. So the big question is, why the script R? Well, we do that, so not a reflection. Which is a regular R. It looks something like that. Reflection through line K of A is so on and so on. So this is what it means over here. And as always, the best way is to see an example. This is uh, the definition, but I don't really care. You can read it anytime you want. So I'm just going to go in the upper half of the coordinate plane. So if we were out here at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, just for the fun of it, call it point P of 5, 2, and I do a rotation about O of 90 of P, we need to consider where it's going to end up. And the best way to do it is to draw a line, and then another line, knowing that it's going to be at a right angle and see if we can figure out where it's going to end up. A lot of people guess that it's going to be at negative 2 comma 5, which is a good guess. I put little vector signs in there for my own personal reason. Because if we think about it, it's 90 degrees, so we know the slopes will be opposite reciprocals. This one is 2 fifths, and this one is negative 5 halves and we can tell they're at 90 degree angles so it looks like we switch X and Y and multiply one of them a negative you're gonna have to be a little bit intelligent when you do it, so the bottom line is check the slopes. And guess what? We make congruent things when we rotate them. They change in their orientation to the world, but they're still congruent. So it's an isometry. Special one, duh, called a half turn. Uh, so let's do a half turn. So let's go out here at a uh, four one. And want to give it a half turn. So it's going to end up somewhere over here. Again, it goes counterclockwise. But for half turn, who cares? Um, and it would look a lot like it's at negative 4, negative 1. Which leads us to this. Can we describe a half turn as just negative x, negative y? And the answer, of course, is yes. So that's kind of nice. Simple rule that you can follow that will save you some time. That's really it. Go do some problems. Good luck.